Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. My name is Moritz Förster. Uh, I welcome all participants of the conference, uh, whether on the site in Shenzhen or online via Zoom. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the LMN 2020 conference for having me and provide me with the opportunity to present the working committee lasers and laser systems for material processing within the German Engineering Federation VDMA. Special thanks also go to Ms. Carrie Wang in Shanghai and Mr. Gül Bari from Hanover uh, from the Deutsche Messe AG. In my presentation, I will describe the VDMA and especially, especially um, the working committee lasers and laser systems for material processing. I will also make some statements and refer to the market data of the German laser industry before the Corona pandemic. So this would be the year 2019 and the activities of the working committee in the field of digitalization with OPC UA. Finally, short outlook on the funding policy of photonics and the European level will follow. So some words um, about my Vita. First, I would like to introduce myself. Um, after graduating from high school in 2008, I started studying chemistry at the Goethe University in Frankfurt. I completed my studies with a specialization in the field of catalysis and inorganic chemistry. This was um, 2014 and I finished with a master's degree. Afterwards, I took the challenge um, of the doctorate in natural sciences. I joined the research group of Professor Dr. Max Holthausen and spent a total of four years working on my PhD thesis in the field of computational chemistry. So this would be computing properties and reactivity of uh, compounds. In cooperation um, with experimental research groups, a total of seven scientific publications were produced. And I was also able to present my research results at national and international conferences and meetings. This would be in the form of poster contributions or lectures. I started my professional career at the VDMA. And the VDMA is the German Engineering Federation um, and has more than uh, 3,300 member companies and is the largest industrial association in Europe. I started as a project manager in the Photonics Forum. And the forum brings together all the specialist groups represented in the VDMA that are explicitly or implicitly concerned with optical technologies. The aim of the Photonics Forum is to address the public comprehensively and uh, to position photonics strongly in funding policy. Um, as in the introduction already mentioned, um, in May this year, I became the managing director of the working committee lasers and laser systems for material processing within the VDMA and I will be happy to share uh, some information about the working committee. So on the following slides, I will take a closer look at the role of the VDMA in the German industry. The VDMA was founded a good 125 years ago in Cologne, Germany, and has been accompanying the German mechan mechanical engineering industry ever since as an important mouthpiece of the industry towards po politics, the press and the interested public. The VDMA, with its broad range of services for technical and political interest representation, has meanwhile been able to win over 3,300 companies as members and represent the largest network for mechanical engineering in Europe. The German mechanical engineering industry is the largest industrial employer in Germany. There are a total of 1.3 million employees and a total turnover of almost 230 billion euros in the year of 2019. With its capital city and foreign offices in Berlin, Brussels, China, Japan, Austria, India, Poland, and Russia, the VDMA provides its members with a full with an all around support in a wide range of matters. The VDMA is organized in a matrix structure. There are various trade associations, working committees, international and European organizations, departments, competence centers, and forums. The diversity of the represented subsectors of mechanical engineering include technologies such as machine tools, plastics and rubber machinery, wind energy, robotics, photovoltaics, air pollution control, software, medical technology, fuel cells, additive manufacturing, and food processing machinery. Further topics um, of the VDMA are education, corporate foresight, this would be um, business strategy development, uh, junior staff activities, uh, foreign trade associations, uh, business advisory and legal affairs. The VDMA, as you can see on this slide, is headquartered in Frankfurt am Main, Germany, and about 450 employees are based in Frankfurt and 100 further employees are located in other 
company. So on the left side, you see the skyline of Frankfurt, which is uh, the only city of a skyline with a skyline in Germany. On the right side, you see the headquarter. On this slide, um, I show you the main management um, of the VDMA and the main management of the association consists of four executives. Um, the chief ex executive officer of the VDMA is Thilo Brotmann um, and his deputies are Dr. Bernd Scherer, Hartmut Rauen and Dr. Ralf Wichers. The team manages uh, the VDMA and also regularly appears in the German media and the daily and trade press. The VDMA also has an, um, a president and deputies and the member companies of the VDMA elect the president and the deputies. This photo um, shows the presidium as of uh, last month. And uh, just last week, the former president, Karl Martin Welka, um, he works for the Alfred Schütte KG, was replaced by Karl Holzken after his regular four year time uh, term of office uh, came to an end. And the new deputy president is Henrik Jung. Finally, I would like to refer to the VDMA website at vdma.org. There you will find um, the latest activities for the individual departments of the VDMA, as well as information about the trade fair landscape in Germany and abroad. Many contents um, are exclusively available for member companies. Um, for example, um, statistics, selected publications, and uh, standard sheets. However, there are also a handful of um, information uh, for non-members. And um, I would also like to mention that uh, during the corona pandemic, all topics relevant to mechanical engineering were collected on a topic page. And you can find this page at mediumaorg slash corona. Also due to the corona pandemic, um, so this is new in the VDMA, there were uh, short lightning surveys as, as we call them. They are currently being carried out in order to obtain a current update on production, incoming orders and the general business situation. The VDMA is also represented on social media, uh, for example, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube. And on the VDMA homepage, you will also find a list of more than 80 newsletters from the different um, departments of the VDMA. These are partly exclusive um, for VDMA members and partly open for external subscribers. So now I will turn to the um, laser department. So one of the VDMA working committees um, is dedicated to laser material processing. The laser working committee has existed uh, since 1988 and uh, Therefore, it's older than myself, and we are an uh, industry-specific grouping within the VDMA. The Laser Working Committee is organizationally linked to the Machine Tool Association. This is um, hard to say that uh, all members of the uh, Working Committee Laser must also become of the members of the Machine Tool Association and the entire VDMA. We have uh, members um, and the membership uh, of 32 companies include the leading manufacturing of laser sources, the de designers of laser machines uh, for material processing, as well as the producers of optical components and other equipment for laser systems. The members meet twice a year uh, to coordinate topics and exchange information about the market situation and the working climate in the companies. And the laser working committee is also responsible for the organization of the photonics forum, which I will explain in detail um, at the end of my talk if I have still some time left. Um, the working committee uh, holds annual press conferences. Um, there we uh, summarize the market data for the uh, press and public. And we um, discuss current developments in the member companies such as applications for lasers in uh, medical technology, electromobility and new technological achievements as well as further activities of the VDMA are presented in this uh, press conferences. Usually the press conferences are held at um, one of the following trade fairs, um, either the LASES in Stuttgart, which uh, should have been this year, and the Laser World of Photonics in Munich, which um, is next year. And uh, here you see, also see um, uh, a, the, a picture of the managing board um, until September, 2020. The managing board consisted of Chairman Dr. Christian Schmitz from Trumpf and the Deputy Chairman Dr. Christoph Ullmann and uh, Thomas Merck, uh, formerly working for, for Coherent. And uh, we have some elections um, for a new deputy to succeed Mr. Merck because he dropped out of Coherent um, will be held in November this year. 
So here you can see um, a short list uh, of trade fairs and um, conferences where the uh, working committee laser is conceptual sponsor. So LASES in Stuttgart um, and the uh, AKL in Aachen, which is the Fraunhofer Institute for Laser Technology. Um, and at the Laser World of Photonics, we uh, also have an appearance. The working committee is also active in the field of press and public relations. For example, um, an image brochure on the landscape of the German laser industry is produced every two years. The brochure is named World of Laser Technology Core of Photonics and will be published next time in 2021. And it uh, presents the current trends in laser industry, market data, uh, company profiles from the circle of members. In addition, uh, articles are regularly published in the print media of the German Machine Tool Association on topics related to photonics and laser technology. And I also uh, like to point out um, that we also have an internet presence of the working committee. And you can find this on the laser.vdma.org. So now I will turn to um, the market data. Some words uh, for the introduction, um, because um, the press conference uh, couldn't be held at the LASES this year. And due to the cancellation, uh, the working committee uh, published a press release. We included a market data for laser systems manufactured in Germany. And um, even before the corona pandemic, the German laser industry was in downturn. The total number of orders fell by 19% in 2019 compared to the year 2018. While in 2018, about 1,300 laser systems were ordered, orders in 2019 dropped to 1,050 systems. At this point, um, it should be noted that most orders came from abroad with a share of about 80%. Production also fell by a double digit of 17% from 1,055 to 870 systems. Also, um, the export uh, of laser systems manufactured in Germany decreased by about 18%. While 950 systems were exported in 2018, the figure fell to 780 in 2019. The laser industry um, was in an economic high for about 10 years, so the German laser industry. And the reason for the slowdown in 2019 is mainly due to uh, structural changes in the automotive industry. For example, the decline in sales of vehicles with combustion engines in Germany and Europe, and the emergence of other drivetrains is decisive here. It should be noted that laser technology is also gaining ground through applications in electric mobility. However, I'd like to point out that the lack of sales due to the use of laser technology by combustion engines is in principle greater. And in this case, the increasing sales through the production of hairpin structures for uh, electromobility or the processing of copper, also for the, the battery production, for example, cannot cushion the mission share due to the declining orders. So on the next slide, um, I will show you the export structures of laser systems um, manufactured in Germany. And as you can see, uh, the majority of exports, uh, which would be uh, slightly above 60%, are made to other European countries. So Europe is um, the uh, biggest uh, market for German laser systems. Um, the European market is followed by other con countries. Um, this would include Japan and the USA with a good 25%. And also maybe interesting for you, China also takes a significant share of the exports with 14%. Okay, um, after I presented the market data, I will now uh, give a quick overview of the activities of the VDMA in the field of OPC UA, and especially, uh, especially the OPC UA activities for laser systems in the context of digitalization and industry 4.0. So OPC UA is an open interface standard that defines the mechanisms of collaboration in the industrial environments it enables the mechanical and plant engineering industry to digitally network its production. Machines and systems can thus be redesigned and required via plug and work, regardless of which manufacturer the machines and the components in production originate from. Together with its member companies, the VDMA develops OPC UA companion specifications, which are like um, standard sheets um, for the implementation of the OPC UA um, code, I would say. 
examples for the development of OPC UA companion specifications. So where the companion specification is uh, finished and the final version is released, um, are machine tools, robotics, textile machines, additive manufacturing, and image processing. The activities concerning OPC UA are coordinate, coordinated by the Industry 4.0 Forum in the VDMA. And their um, four colleagues work on, the, on this strategically very important topic of the VDMA. And the VDMA sees its role in bundling the standardization activities of the men member companies. Since last year, 2019, the working committee laser and laser systems for material processing also have been active in the field of OPC UA. In cooperation with the ESW of the University of Stuttgart, a white paper was prepared. Um, it is intended to query uh, the necessity of an OPC UA companion specification bundled by the VDMA. And um, I'd like to point out that at this point, um, the, uh, I would say the roadmap um, or the actions of the uh, working committee uh, differ from the activities of the VDMA. And um, with this white paper, we tried um, to um, check if there is a necessity for the VDMA to bundle an OPC UA companion specification. The focus uh, was put on the laser as a machine component. So laser as a beam source, so to say, from the point of view of the maintenance engineer. The core team of members included the plant manufacturers, Access, ASAP Messer Cutting Systems, as well as the beam source manufacturers, Coherent, Laserline and Trumpf. So in this uh, slide, you see um, a screenshot of, of the white paper um, with the different uh, logos. And currently, um, the working committee lasers and laser systems is still collecting feedback on the white paper. So if you want to catch up on this, please check uh, our website and the OPC UA website of the VDMA to be in touch with the latest developments. So um, the last three minutes, um, I'd like to talk about the current activities of the Photonics Forum. The Photonics Forum uh, bundles the departments within the VDMA that are connected with optical technologies. These are industrial image processing, printed electronics, lasers, electronics manufacturing, photovoltaics, and microtechnology. And the topics um, that we deal with uh, range from national and European funding policies um, to the promotion of young researchers and public relations. The topic of quantum technologies actually will also be examined in more detail in the future. Here, the cooperation with the Competence Center Future Business is particular, particularly noteworthy. So some statements on the European funding policy. As you might know, the European Union bundles its research funding in uh, framework programs, and they all run uh, seven years. And the ECTRA or program, the Horizon 2020 program, will run until the end of uh, this year. And the new research framework program Horizon Europe will start um, in 2021. The aim is to ensure the excellence in European science um, through transnational research projects. And the provision of the originally planned budget of 100 billion euros um, for Horizon Europe is considered rather unlikely at this stage. I will make some statements on that. Um, this is due not least to the corona pandemic, but even before this, uh, there were budget negotiations. Um, in detail, the European photonics industry had to contend with the weakening of the positioning of technology at the beginning of the Horizon Europe's planning. The key words here are the public-private partnership, which uh, would be Photonics 21, and the listing as a key enabling technology. So Photonic um, at the beginning of the planning was no longer listed as a, a key enabling technology and the continuation of the Photonics 21 technology platform was not secured. But the, also the VDMA sent a letter to the EU commission and the BMBF, um, which is a German uh, federal uh, institution for, for funding of research on behalf of the CEO of the VDMA. And this letter called for a stronger positioning of Photonics in the draft program of Horizon Europe. And um, these efforts have borne fruit, actually, as Photonics is now again being run as a key enabling technology and the Photonics 21 platform will continue to exist. And uh, I'd like to close um, and say that this development can be seen as a success for the European photonics industry. And 
And in addition, there was also a publication of a paper of the EU Commission, a new strategy for green and digital Europe. And there also the position of the optical technologies in Europe um, funding policy has been perceived as significantly improved. So that would be um, my talk and I'll be happy to answer any questions if you would like to know something more about the VDMA. Um, and in this closing, I would also like to say that the VDMA represents German laser manufacturers um, uh, to uh, politics and the press. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, many thanks to uh, Dr. Maurice uh, Forster. One audience in Shenzhen wants to ask you one question. What is the real difference between the Chi like Chinese laser market and that in Germany? What's the real difference? What's the real I, would, I would say um, the real difference is, um, of course, uh, the numbers that, uh, or the capacity, I would say, to um, produce uh, laser systems. And also, I know that uh, Hans Laser um, has a production site also in Germany. It's not uh, that far from Frankfurt. I think it's a two hour drive away. Yeah. And um, I think uh, one strength of the German industry is um, the production of um, um, special um, machine machines uh, for laser material processing. Um, but of course, uh, of, on the other hand, um, the, the Chinese uh, laser industry um, is in some parts ahead of the uh, German laser industry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks again to Dr. Maurice Forster. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,